Hello everybody, Keith here again. Um, my usual end of the month, what's in bloom video. Um, I'm doing it now before anything else goes wrong this month. Um, I've had a couple of plants where the flowers have come and gone, which I wasn't really expecting. Um, my no ID white cattleya um, dropped a flower two days ago. It only ever has two on a, a cane. Um, one blasted just as it was starting to change colour. And the other one opened, only been open about 10 days to a fortnight. Um, and then I came down a couple of days ago in the morning and it was lying on the dining table. Um, the other one is one of my two Sologeny Fimbriatas. Again, the flower didn't last very long, but at least I've got one to show you because the other one does have a flower still, but that one never really seems to get going for me. I'm going to have to have another think about it. I do know that I screwed up one of them this year. I put it outside. I thought it would do it some good um, to get some rainwater, a bit of natural daylight. Um, got it in the wrong place and got too much light. Um, and it got burnt, started dropping leaves. I had to oik it back inside and there were two pieces in that and one of them actually died altogether. By contrast, when we went away for a week, um, I moved my pleonies and my cymbidiums round to the back of the garden from where they are now, and put it under a tree where they were more shaded, um, really to try and stop them drying out a little bit, give them a little bit better. They didn't get enough light. They really didn't do any good at all. My planes have been a shambles this year, done absolutely nothing. I've lost some uh, altogether. Um, and the ones that have survived have not produced such big bulbs as they sometimes do. So that's something I'm going to have to have another think about. But anyway, let's get down to uh, where we are as usual. Now then, we are now towards the end of October. The daylight length is right down now. Um, and so, of course, are the temperatures. We've had a reasonably mild autumn so far, um, but the temperatures are due to drop next week. So we're going to see the first frosts of the winter, um, which will be the beginning of November. So, um, it's going to get cooler here again unless I can have a, another thing about it but so far it's been getting it used to be that it could get in here up to the low to mid 30s at times if we, especially if we weren't here to open the windows and at night it would drop down to 19-20 well now it's getting to 19 or 20 during the day and it's getting down to 16 and a half or so at night um, and of course that depends on the height so the higher they are the warmer it stays and it can lose a degree or so in a foot which is a bit surprising really but anyway some of them are doing all right I've got nubbins on my no ID um, well nominally no ID what I call my IKEA Dendrogen, that's where I bought it, uh, which is almost certainly spring dream. Oh, it's got a number of nice, uh, nice nubbins, a definite nubbins that categorically aren't cakey because they're growing differently. Um, some of the others from the species are beginning to show that little shape underneath the, the surface of the canes, but I haven't actually pushed anything out yet. I've got spikes on one of my twinkles, the red one, the white white one still got to sort itself out again. Um, I've got spikes on two of my den fowls. Um, and in terms of very soon 
um, rather than actually in flower. This is my no ID um, Cycnodes, Cycnodes, it's not a catacetum. Um, I think the shape of the cane is probably wrong for that. Um, but I got this last year from Lawrence Hobbs um, in flower. And that was the cane it came with. This is the cane it's grown this year. It must be at least twice the diameter. Well, not really diameter, it's oblong, but it's, it's twice the width. And probably get very close to twice the height as well. So it's a much bigger cane, done a lot better. And we've got a nice spike with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, possibly nine if it doesn't blast uh, flowers to come. They're going to be out fairly soon. I don't know how well you're going to see this, but um, you're starting to see speckles on the side of the of the buds are beginning to change colour so I think they are going to be uh, opening up in the next 10 days or so I guess. But I thought you might like to have a look at that as something that's fairly unusual. You don't get catacetum types very often in this country. I don't seem to be all that popular. Um, you see Lycastes and Pleiades and what have you in terms of the what you might call annual types. Um, but Catacetums, no, not really. Not even things like um, Millennium Magic Witchcraft and what have you. Even the big enthusiasts don't do that. But um, we'll see. Okay, well, let's make a start. Uh, oh, yeah, now I've got a couple of. Um, another disaster is really the wrong word. The big pink twilight phalaenopsis that I've had in bloom for a very, very long time in the last 12 months. Um, that had a spike which grew, flowered, then put a branch out which was still growing and flowering. I picked it up to water the other day um, and the branch fell off. Turned out, when I looked at the base, it had uh, probably been broken through about three quarters of the way and it only needed you to pick it up a little bit too vigorously and the whole thing fell off, which was a shame in some ways because um, it was still in, quite, it had quite a few flowers on it, there were buds still developing, but on the other hand now it can go into vegetative growth and it wanted a repot anyway. so. That needs looking at. So let's have a look at the, the plants themselves. One, as I'm absolutely sure, is not going to be around next month. Or if it is, you're only going to see an odd spike. This is uh, one um, which has been identified as Zygonissia Rhine Blue Angel. Um, I've never had a flowering like this off I think any of my orchids. It's, it really, really has done well. I wish to goodness we've been having face-to-face -face meetings when this was in its prime because I, I think it would have got some uh, rave reviews from some of our, uh, our people. Um, I've never seen anything like it but looking at it we've already got one new growth coming again. This is a an absolutely amazing plant. Got it from Burnham's in 2018, I think it was, when we had a trip down to Devon and I called in and I bought it purely and simply because it was different. I wanted another zygotype um, and this was a little bit different to the normal colour scheme. Um, and it's not everybody's cup of tea, sort of green and purple. But um, when you get a, a display like that, you really can't knock it, can you? Another one of Burnham's plants, not anything to do with me. This isn't. This is um, 
Doritis, which I think now is classed as a Phalaenopsis, uh, Pulcorima variant Alba. Um, the lips on these are really quite intriguing, the shape of them, the way they pop down at the front. They've got that sort of pouch. They're obviously in the Phalaenopsis family, but the, this part is definitely not the same. This bit, I think it must do something like that when an uh, insect lands on it. Two plants in the pot. Um, each had a spike when I got it. Um, the one that is fully spent is still green. Um, I haven't taken anything off. Um, oh, hello, we've got an infestation of beasties. Right, well, that'll have to go outside and be sprayed. Um, we'll give that a good spray before it goes back. But um, I think I'd have go, go at it last month, so I haven't done it. But there's no sign of it branching, but it hasn't gone brown yet, so I'm going to just wait and see if it does do anything. Um, and hopefully it won't turn too brown. But yeah, that's one that's going to have to be. Uh, be given a good spray and how well you can see the little beast on that just there that's the biggest of them but there's some more just sitting on on these little stubs where the flowers have been so yeah that's uh, that's one that's going to have to be um, looked at Another one that's uh, perhaps not a really cup of tea, but um, again, when you get two spikes like this, um, you can forgive it an awful lot. This is Alisara Marfitch Renaissance Coral. There are a lot of these about a few years ago or a couple of years ago. You occasionally see them now, not so much, but. Um, this is the one I've had 2018, 2017, something like that. Um, and it's grown on quite nicely for me. So two spikes, one off each new growth. Bulbs aren't looking absolutely fantastic. But they're all looking about as um, drained. So... Um, but we've got plenty of roots down into the bottom of the pot, so this may simply be how these things go. Um, but, yep, Zygonisia, uh, sorry, I could be. Alice R. Marfitch Renaissance Coral. Got that very, very cheaply from a friend who keeps a, a market store who had the opportunity to pick up some plants. Gave me a nod, um, and I got three for uh, a very good price. And then went went to a garden centre on the way home, and saw some of the, exactly the same plants that were about three or four times the price. Another one that doesn't know when to stop flowering. This is Phalaenopsis, and no idea that somebody's identified as full of sunset golden sun. Quite a big flower, really quite pretty. Don't think we're going to get ever such a lot more buds on this. There's perhaps one more to come after these two open. I shan't be sorry. This is a real tangle of roots that's going to want um, a look at. It's been in this pot for a little while. I don't think it's going to want potting up. Um, but this is a plant which used to be a lot bigger, as you can see from this leaf. It was a great deal bigger than this. And I've said many times before, pretty much every time I've fitted it out, I didn't feed it well enough when it was in flower. And it had a m really major flowering. Um, and then just exhausted itself. And 
I nearly lost it. It took me several years to get it, um, get it back again. Another one that really won't give over, I did try earlier on in the year um, cutting the spikes off in the hope it were going to vegetative growth and it said no, nope, but I'm in that, put it on a spike up. And as you can see there's still a number of buds to come on this one. So this is getting fed regularly. The nice thing is we're getting lots of new roots. Um, so we've had a new leaf this year as well, it's nice and shiny, first new leaf in a while. So it's the first sign we've had that this thing is, is going to grow a bit. Um, worries me when plants don't grow. Um, last of the fowls is little no ID, which I've had for oh, a long time now. Um, very reliable little plant. Um, I just find it really gorgeous. I don't know what it is about this one, but it's really, really lovely. Just everything about it is, is gorgeous. Um, and it just does its own thing, grows nicely, lots of roots, some nice flowers once or twice a year. Um, what more could you want from a supermarket fowl that you thought that was? Um, yeah, can we manage to wangle it so you can see this? I don't know how close we can get it before it uh, stops focusing. I can't really see on the screen I'm looking at to try and weigh it all up. I think that's okay. Cologeny fimbriata. It's the only cologeny I can get anywhere at all with. Um, as I say, I nearly lost the whole thing. I did lose the other piece that was in this pot. Uh, but it's, um, we've got some new growths coming. Um, Nothing else going to flower this year, unfortunately, so it's only one flower off each piece, although having said that, the other piece actually flowered for the first time, so that's this one. Um, the pseudobulbs were a bit better on this one, actually. Um, and again, we've got some new growths on it. They've tried to flower but haven't, which is a bit of a shame because they only flower once, as far as my experience goes, but um, there we are. Another reason I wanted to film it a little bit early, because it's now the 27th, rather than the very end of the month, is that my Psychopsis mariposa is in flower again. Um, can't knock that one, can you really? You really can't. Really amazing flowers on these. Growing nicely, we've had, we're on the third or fourth new growth this year. We've got a little one. Where are we? Down there. No, are you going to see it? Um, there, there we are. But um, everything slowed down. You know, as the daylight's reduced and the temperatures have gone down, even in the living room, this is where, where it sits. Um, everything slowed down. I'll have to wind the watering back on this one um, because it's uh, um, it's not uh, not using it. Another one that's not mine, as far as the flowers go, this is um, Oncidium sotoanum. Repotted it uh, last month, around about a month ago. Um, it hasn't 
enjoyed it. The pseudo bulbs are looking a bit dried up. I um, don't know where to knock these flowers off or just let it go. We've got some new growth, so there's a, a fair chance we're going to get some new roots before long, but it needs some new roots we're going to get anywhere. But so to on them. A little bit of scent, but I suspect we're not getting a lot because it's not bright enough, not warm enough. And another one that I think this is the last hurrah for a bit. This is my Mazda Valia. Possibly Patricia Hill, that uh, some people say he isn't, but um, we all know that hybrids vary quite a lot, or can vary quite a lot. Um, but whatever it is, it's doing really well. We've got new growths still coming up. Can't see any more spikes emerging at the moment, perhaps it'll need to come round to the spring or perhaps a little bit later. But that's, um, that's I think coming down to the end of this slush of blooms, that'll all be finished in the next, I don't know, couple of weeks I suspect. So I think that's that. I think it's a case of thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I've enjoyed showing my plants to you. Uh, thank you for watching, as I say. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.